again and again and again. Happy trails to you. Keep I smiling until then. <laughs> Who cares about, about the weather? The rest of the song. Just this one. Greetings, this is Sparklet speaking, and I am thrilled to share an incredible story with you. During this past summer, we had the wonderful opportunity to host our dear friends from Hawaii, Hartwell Apo and Judy Lenhal, right here in Latvia. Hartwell is a world-renowned deep-sea diver with numerous prestigious awards to his name. In fact, his remarkable diving expertise was even featured in an article by National Geographic. Now you have the extraordinary privilege to join us for lunch in the charming town of Madonna, Latvia, and listen to Hartwell as he regales us with some of his most captivating diving adventures. Don't miss out on this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. People would ask, how, how, how come you, you know, you dive 60, 80 feet, then you go back up 40 feet, then you go back down another 40 feet, then... Where do you think where, you are, an elevator? Where do you get all <laughs> this air from, you know? And, and I said, it's, it's, you call that compaction. You swallow air, and you come back in your air. And when you go at the bottom, you, naturally the air come out upon you, right? But you rebreathe the air, what you put it out there. Oh, interesting. You kind of like vacuum back up again, and they kind of looking at me like, they think they're going to learn it one dive, and I said, no, it's practice, you know, but you have to feel comfortable. Right. Because if a shark come behind you, you can be like, oh, what is that? No, all that air is gone. And right. Now you, and now you're 60 feet down. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, and just, <laughs> it was just amazing. You know, and like, because it was getting a lot of uh, shallow water blackout, and people never know what was going on. Right. And it was blacking out and dying like 10 feet like, from here to there, and it was dying because, you know, of the. Uh, you know, the, the technology it was giving us. You know, yeah, if you're not used to it or prepared for it, you can black out and never even know you're about to black out. Yeah. It's just, boom. Yeah, and, 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 and there was another you know, thing that they said, and they were talking about, now if the guy black out, how do you do CPR? And I told them, the only one thing they teach us is, that I learned was, Take out the weight belt. You gotta lose all that. Your spear gun is on the floater on the, on the line, so you cannot go that. But now you gotta flip him over because he's black out, and you have to blow in his eyes. That's what I think. You know, like like you, you're uh, fidgeting in your eye, and it's the only thing you can do because you cannot do CPR. Right. And that's supposed to bring you back. Sometimes it does, sometimes it does. Those, yeah, <laughs> if you're not there in the right time, you know. So it's very interesting. You know? but when I was studying to become a paramedic on Honolulu, I, I found out that they never saved anybody from a drowning accident in Hawaii. Because by the time they get there, they've already been gone for too long. Yeah, but they got to do what the Right. You know, they got to go through, through the motions. Yeah, and you know, already they had no change. What they were doing is they were. Um, they were, they wanted us to put on a diving show that people were diving over 100 feet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And That's a long way. It's a long, it's like on the left. It's, 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 it's dark, dark down there. And it's dark, and you gotta feel comfortable, and this and that. And were, Pressure's heavy. And I had a cameraman. <clears throat> they used to video it, and we used to video that and sell them to the show for putting it on a special channel. And the guys was paying us for this, so every weekend we have to kind of stay one or two weeks ahead of time for this. But our cameraman on this show, I don't know what happened, his goggles got fogged out or the water went inside, so 
When he came out of the water, he was busy videoing the land where we were diving. Instead of the divers. You know, and he's down the water, he only videoing down, but he's videoing the land. And the very next day, we we kind of just don't shoot the fish, but just kind of video what we're doing, and, you know, just leave in the fish and come back the next day, or, you know, because uh, the show is done. and. But now we see all these people that have watched the show is all over there diving what they ate show. They know what did because they seen the show. So they, they were diving. Where so, to dive. And then I talked to my friend and I said, I don't want to do this anymore. Because we just like we open our ice box and people know where we dive. And everybody okay. from Honolulu could see it as well. Right. And they could see what had and things that we couldn't get because they had better technology than us. Sure. You know, so and they were good. He know? said, I'm done. End of his diving videography career. Everything changes. Yeah, so my friend, he go to Philippines now and dive because it's cheaper. He built his own spear guns down there. Huh? He got, uh, you know, he's like a factory going on now. He owned one beach bungalow where he can, you know, people can, you know, That's make great. money too. The people live there, take their people out, go diving, and then a whole competition there and get all the, what you call, the prizes from here, from uh, Hawaii to bring down there. It's like, uh, it's like a uh, promotion, like, you know, because all oh, this thing came from this company, and we like to thank them for donating and all this stuff. So, it, publicity I guess you know so wow we try to help a lot of small business to get up there <clears throat> it's um so I but I seen that changes it came to one point where people wasn't diving for put on the on, food on you the know table. Bring, on the table was more like to show how much they can shoot them and never had regulation for what size and you know there was just just yeah. It offended his sense of sustainability and economic justice and just doing what's right for the Aina. Yeah, that's that's good. Yeah. So, so it's... Well, um, the Hawaiian is Hawaiian and part of that is um, humility and d not, don't brag. So he doesn't brag. But I'm not Hawaiian, so I can brag all I want. And he has won um, championships in free diving and set state records. And my favorite story about uh, a state record, he came home one day and I go, how was the dive? It was good, great. You see any fish? Yeah. Did you get any? Yeah. Um, well, where are they? Out in the cooler. I go, okay. So I go out, because I like to look and see. And then he says on the way out, I might have set a state record. Wow, now I really got to go see, right? So I open up the cooler, and I pull out all these fish, and they just look like normal fish to me. I mean, he would come home with fish as big as this table, and the cooler wasn't that big, so... I don't see any state record material here. So I go in and I go, I don't see any state record material. He says, well, I'll clean up my gear and I'll come show you. So he comes out later and he holds up this fish. Okay, I've shown you the pictures of the fish that he spears, right? And he picks up this fish and it's about the same size <laughs> as his hand, okay? And I go, yeah, that's it? I'm looking for bragging rights. My husband had a state record and that fish was so big. I said, how can I go tell all my friends, this you think is a state record <laughs> and it's only this big? And he goes, because normally they're like this big. So to get the state record, um, it's like doing a grant application. You have to have witnesses. You have to fill photographs. The whole thing has to be notarized and signed and, you know. 
I'm, I'm surprised that divers even do it. So he submitted it and he won the state record for that. And I was very proud of him. But I go, hey, next time you want to go win one state record, <laughs> I would appreciate big one. if you got one big fish. <laughs> this. And he goes, um, they're never going to beat my record because they're normally this big. Okay. It's it so was the biggest small fish. The biggest yeah. small so fish the, ever. The fish was, it, they call it coli yellow eye. It's yellow eye. And the fish, you can just put it in a frying pan and the oil come out from the fish. That's yeah. his fish. It's how good the fish is. Wow. Show me. That's okay. the state, state record. That's a state record. <laughs> it's a small fish. Oh, wow. It was a couple of years ago. But it's it? a big small fish. It's a big, it's the biggest small fish. And I think the picture that I liked the best was this one. He's in front of his Skin Diver magazine, so they could use that for photos and everything. He's so, so proud. In proud, all your proud, time proud. of diving, you never saw one that big. And well, then you saw that one. That day we were diving, usually when we go in the water, I try to just jump in the water. I kind of just slip myself in like a monk seal and then just slip wait. Slip in like a monk seal. Just wait. I don't, I don't spear nothing. I don't chase nothing. I just see if any fish come to me. And if not, He sort of treats them like women and the way he attracted me. You know, so, he just like beats the drum and they appear. So, <laughs> so next time we go in the ocean again and you see there's no fish, all you have to do is dive in a sand, scoop your hand in the water like this, and just fly them in the air. And you watch what's going to happen. And all these fish can be coming around because now we got free food. You know, they looking if you get crabs, some kind of shrimp in it. You know, I food. noticed that in our lake. Yeah. And I just put some soil up in the air, all the fish appear. Yeah, they all appear. So, oh, we don't have to dig for this. Yeah, so <laughs> you can scratch on a rock, you can, you can grunt, like, you know, so if you listen real good on the water, you can hear the fish really talking. The male is calling a female, the female is calling a male, and every fish is different. Yeah. And so, you know, you get, you, you know, you can get Fish to if fish swimming away, you can make on certain night to retrieve him back to you, you know. So, <clears throat> and we take advantage of that kind of method, you know. And uh, we use flashers, we use, but most of all, um, when I was doing that and cutting bait same time, and we bring in different kind of fish like sharks now coming in, and I started to uh, look into the uh, in Africa, they have these gazebo uh, sharks and great whites. So they got this shark shoe that they carry now. And this thing lasts seven hours on the water. And the thing is about 10 to 15 meters. It's longer in, in that device, but 15 minutes, 15 meters around you, the shark will never come inside. Oh, so good. So, and although, yeah. although, I got to say something there. My, uh, First professor in Hawaii, uh, Professor Chuck Daniels, he um, earned his doctorate through finding a certain type of an organ in a shark for its smelling sense and its for its for its electric sensing. Yeah, yep. And he told me, he says, you know, yeah, he says there's some shark repellents out there. They were pretty good. He says, but if you get a big shark and it's purpose bent on getting you. He says there's nothing that's going to stop a death run of that shark. Yeah, go right it, it will get you. <laughs> yeah. So, but it does work for me. It does work. And I, I feel a little bit comfortable. Yeah. And uh, I die by myself, and which now I don't, but I used to. And, uh, yeah, it does work. Yeah. It's really expensive, especially when they first came out. Of course, he buys them sure. when he first comes out. But what am I going to say? Your life isn't worth the money. No, <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna spend the money, and you're gonna you're gonna try so, it out. That is the he's, he's, I said, what was it like? And he goes, pretty good. I said, how could you tell it worked? He says, well, I was just there, and the sharks just kept circling me at exactly the amount of feet that they said they so, would not come closer. He says it's like a big merry-go-round only. I'm in the center. 
and the sharks go like <laughs> So the advantage is don't go in a dirty water because then you don't see nothing. Right. So try to stay in the clean water at all times. And when I get out of the water, I'll leave the fish there. The shark is there, but I'm on the out of the, I'm out of the water now. And when I take the fish out, you know, and as the first thing I'll take is a shark device, put it away because I don't want to show the, the younger generation because then they can start spearing everything. Right. You know, so and there's another diver come and he said, "Oh, there's a lot of fish here. I'm gonna dive." Here. And I used to talk to Charlie, Charlie, just watch. And you look these big things surface out of the water. He said, how a big shot. And he said, uh, I think I gotta go someplace else. <laughs> and then he started doing something else. I said, yeah, and I don't kill the shark. Cause he, he's like my dog, they can protect my food now. You know what I mean? So I just leave him alone. You know, I always want him there. Sure. So. So usually I go there, I'll find all kind of wetsuit knives because they see this big shark, they drop everything and save their lives. So, he doesn't use the metal detector, he uses a shark so detector. Pay for itself. And he goes, gets yeah. it, gets all of the toys. You know, but, uh, you know, are you comfortable with that? That, that is already on the feet. Already do. Is there yeah, there is information. Do you speak at home English or Hawaiian? Uh, you speak Hawaiian if something. Hawaiian people are around, so we, we use that. What about you? Did you speak Hawaiian? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Say something in Hawaiian. What does it mean? It's the state motto, and it means the life of the land is perpetuated in righteousness. And that's the state motto. Good motto. Yeah. So. What's your mother' favorite phrase? What she told you in Hawaiian? Your mother's favorite Hawaiian phrase? Mm -hmm. Don't get smart with me. <laughs> <laughs> Tell it in Hawaiian. So I, I know what it was, Lydia. I know what it was. <laughs> Tell it in Hawaiian. Don't get smart with don't, me. Don't get smart How is it in Hawaiian? And well, like uh, I would say. Uh, ole akamai. Yeah, ole akamai. So it sounds very different. Don't smart with me. <laughs> oh, don't get smart with me. That's what it means. It's yeah, Yes, akamai. it sounds a little bit akamai. Japanese. Yeah. Okay. You know, so, so, so I always used to tell people, you know, my mother always told me, don't get smart with me, so I never come smart. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I listened to my mother. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I know what the second favorite phrase was. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> Whenever a woman says, you know what? You know you're in trouble. <laughs> I'm sure you like to listen to Hartford's story. In my other films, I'm sharing with you more stories about Hawaiian visit to Latvia. But he bought that blue jacket and the white shirt, dress shirt, and it was dazzling on him. So he looks like a Hollywood actor. I know, that's what everybody said. Like and subscribe to my channel, watch my videos, and enjoy your life. Your sparklet. Yeah. <laughs>